Hey guys, welcome back to The Compound. I have a fun project in the workshop today that I am really excited to start working on. So this is a 3D printed prototype figure of the unreleased Triceratops from the Lost World toy line. Now in case you don't know what that is, um, there are very few photos of it on the internet, but this one here is probably the most famous one that I'm sure most of you are familiar with. It is a really cool concept for a trike. It's just a shame that it never made it into production. But fortunately, we live in an amazing era and we have super talented people who have the technology to bring these things to life. And this trike figure is made possible by the incredibly talented Gary Surratt over at Surratt Tech. And my job for this project is to basically take this prototype that he sent me and create the paint master for it. I'll then send it back to Gary, and when he receives it, he'll be able to scan the trike and the patterns that I have put on it and create stencils for it so he can then paint a run of these in his shop where he lives. Gary will also be offering this figure in a couple of different options from a DIY kit that you can build and paint yourself all the way up to a fully produced, fully painted trike figure. So be sure to follow him on Instagram and Facebook to stay up to date when the figure releases. Now this isn't necessarily a how to paint video uh, since this is just the prototype and final colors may vary. Um, this is more of a behind the scenes of creating the paint master for him to use as reference and I figured you guys might find it interesting. So I will be covering this trike again closer to the release showing you how to build and paint the DIY kit but until then I'm going to focus on getting this paint master ready for production. So I'm approaching this deco with the mindset of what would Kenner do. So that means no real hyper realistic paint apps, just keeping things very simple and very basic. I want it to sort of have a factory vibe and that classic Kenner charm when I'm done. So because there are very, very little um, images of this thing to go off of, the only one that I really have to use as reference is this that really grainy photo that I showed you earlier. And um, just by looking at it, it looks as though as if the trike has some kind of olive green fading on it or something. So I'll just go in first with some Vallejo olive green and apply a light fade of that green all over the top sections of the trike. With the olive green done, uh, I'm gonna move on to the underside and I'm actually sealing the uh, paint in as I'm applying it. So I've already sealed and dried the uh, green section so it doesn't rub off. And so now I'm gonna take some flesh tone paint and I'm gonna uh, hit the underside lightly with that flesh tone and just fade it up into the blue skin that the figure is printed in. Now that I've got the olive green and flesh tones done, it's time to move on to what is probably the hardest part of this project, and that is um, creating the patterns on the back. So again, going back to that reference photo that I have, and I'm just kind of going over it and, and kind of getting an idea of where these patterns sit on the body. And this is gonna be sort of um, the best way for me to kind of mimic these uh, in a way. Uh, I'm not gonna try and make them look exactly like that because the sculpt, you know, Gary's sculpt is slightly modified differently than this one that Kenner made. So the patterns might sit a little bit different on the body. Uh, so, but the only one I'm really am trying to get, you know, somewhat close is that heart-shaped uh, pattern on the side, on the right side. That one to me seems pretty, you know, iconic to that thing. Um, and it's uh, it has always stuck out to me like that little heart shape on there. So that's the one I'm gonna keep. But for the rest of them, I'm just gonna use creative licensing and that rule of cool and just try and approach it the way that Kenner would have done it uh, back in 1997. I'm gonna try and make them look aesthetically pleasing and uh, a simple design all around. That way Gary can easily reproduce these on his end. So I figured the best way for me to get symmetrical-ish patterns on it uh, is to turn to my trusty masking putty and um, get working at getting the patterns laid out was sort of the hardest part of this. But I, I thought to myself that it would be easier to plan it out this way instead of going right in with the paintbrush and just painting them on and then potentially messing up because I only have this one trike here with me so I wanted to try to get it at you know one go around so I just started to lay the putty out on the body kind of 
in the general area of where I wanted the patterns to go and then I went in with the end of my paintbrush and started to manipulate and sort of sculpt the putty uh, and get it into the general shape of uh, the patterns uh, that I wanted along the back. And then once I got the putty down and everything looked good, I went back in with a pencil and started to outline the um, putty patterns that I had put on. Uh, just a real fine outline with the pencil. And this way, once I take the putty off, if I see a particular pattern or a shape that I don't think looks good, I can just simply erase it off of the, the plastic resin and I can you know, redraw it with the pencil just to kind of give myself a guideline with it. But I think this is the best way to do it. Uh, that way it looks good, you know, it's, it's straight. You know, if I had gone in with a paintbrush and I, and I got crooked at one point and it would have looked weird. So this right here is gonna be the best way to do it because I wanted these patterns to look nice and clean uh, just right out the door because this is gonna be the pattern that's gonna be on the figure that people are gonna buy. So it's gotta look good. And um, now that I've got the outline done on it I can move over and grab some paint and start uh, coloring in all of the um, patterns as for the colors uh, that I'm using for the pattern um, it may change depending on what Gary decides to use for the final production piece but you know this is just the prototype uh, I went in with some uh, dark blue and uh, mixed in a little black with it just to get a really really dark blue color and um, fortunately since I spent all that time planning out the patterns with the putty and, and you know drawing it in the outline with the pencil you know painting it is really just gonna be a breeze It's essentially coloring at this point and I'm just trying to be as steady as I can uh, and go slow and make nice clean lines. Uh, that way it just makes Gary's job a little easier on his end. So in that classic Kenner fashion, Gary did put a real working dino damage piece on this trike and it can be removed and everything like that. It's gonna be really cool. Um, it's just awesome to see this all come together. It's such a, like a dream come true to be able to work on this trike. Uh, but this is one more paint app that I need to put on it. And um, the inside, if you've seen a dino damage wound before on a counter dinosaur, you know that it is red and the bones are painted white. So I'm gonna go in first and just paint the um, meaty areas with some scarlet red. And I'm not worrying about getting the red on the bone areas. I'm, I'm more focused on not getting any of the red on the light blue skin on the inside. Uh, but once the red is dried, I'll then jump in with some off-white sort of bone color and paint the bones on the inside. Now this is the hold your breath moment because I want to try and keep any paint slop down to a minimum. That way I can uh, have a nice smooth coverage and I can get this thing sealed up and the paint won't uh, peel off once the plug is put in and taken out. So all of the hard parts are pretty much done. We're reaching that home stretch where this thing is gonna be finally finished. And uh, we're just gonna do all the little kind of finer details and stuff on this guy. So I'm gonna paint each of the nails with some beige. And this will be the same beige that I use for the horns and uh, the beak and stuff like that. But um, we're gonna go ahead and paint those uh, with the beige color. I don't think that the original Kenner one, it didn't look like they were painted. Maybe they were, it's kinda hard to tell in that picture, but I'm gonna paint them anyways because you gotta paint the nails on your dinosaurs. You can't leave them unpainted. Um, let's see, I'm gonna go in with some scarlet red next and carefully um, paint the uh, tongue on the inside. And then I'll take some of that same beige that I used on the nails and I'll paint the beak and just kind of cut in around the light blue skin very carefully here. And uh, then we're gonna jump in with some yellow ochre and paint the eye. And then we'll follow that up with a black pupil and that uh, Kenner white light catch. Now I'll jump back in with that same beige color that I used on the beak and the claws and I'm gonna paint each individual spike along the frill and then I'm gonna paint all the horns separately and you can see here I have them actually hot glued down to my painting board and I'm gonna blast them with that beige color just thin down through my airbrush. So I have one final thing to paint and that is the tent accessory that comes with the trike. And uh, there's really not a whole lot going on here. So I'm actually just gonna hit it real quick with a couple of coats of this yellow ochre brown color and call it a day. I'm gonna seal everything up and then we'll head over to the photo booth to take some really fun pictures. That way I can get this trike packed up and sent to Gary and he can start production on this thing. 
As always, I appreciate you guys hanging out and watching, and I hope you all enjoyed this little behind-the-scenes look at my small part in making this Lost World trike a reality. For more information on the Lost World trike and to stay up to date on when it releases, be sure to follow Gary over at Surat Tech on Instagram and Facebook. We'll leave links in the description box below. So that is going to do it for this video. You guys take care, and I'll see you around the compound.